This is really a, a, a place that we are showcasing what happens in San Diego County. In San Diego County, we're a community that cares. We're a community that comes together to protect the most vulnerable. And that is what the legacy of Cesar Chavez was, is to really demand fairness. Because without demanding fairness and justice, rights are lost and people are working in undignified situations. So the beauty of what's happening today is about the collaboration. In 2021, I opened the first workplace justice unit in California and possibly in the United States. We immediately became a part of a think tank at Harvard to study what are best practices in protecting workers, in protecting the community, and in protecting honest employers from those greedy, unscrupulous employers that undercut them and don't allow them to compete in the free market. And with the start of that unit, the unit got a huge push because at the same time as we started the Workplace Justice Unit at the District Attorney's Office, the county authorized a Workplace Justice in the OLCE, which is headed by Brendan uh, Butler. And this allowed the ability to have a transfer of information and to have restitution <coughs> given criminally as well as through the civil fund that the Board of Supervisors set up. This also built on a long time relationship with our esteemed and incredible California Labor Commissioner, Lilia Garcia Brower who we've worked with for years, even before as she was an advocate for workers in building cases and making historic cases that send a message that a violation of workers' rights are not going to be permitted. <coughs> this unit is headed by our great chief, Victor O, and our a leader for that unit, Shanish Alour, and our lead district attorney investigator, Yvette Gaines, who are all with me today. And they have a lot to show for. Since 2021, when this unit came open, this unit set the mark. We prosecuted the first felony wage theft case in the state of California as soon as the law allowed for it. This was a case where a worker was not paid for um, over a year. So over $950, well over in wage theft. This employee was threatened subtly, but yet threatened by their employer that if they paid them before they got their green card, that that would re reflect poorly on their immigration status. When in fact, what reflects poorly is when you cheat and lie and cheat people out of their fair wages person was prosecuted and there was restitution to that victim to make them whole. Currently, we have a recent case where a local bread company stopped paying its employees, kept promising them payment, again hinted about their status and how that's going to hurt them. They closed down the shop and somehow did not manage to pay the employees was over $100,000 in loss that our unit prosecuted as a felony and is aiming to recoup. When you think about wage theft, it is on a continuum. You start with wage theft, wage abuses, not allowing somebody the dignity when they're counting the pennies to put food on the table for their children, buy them shoes as their feet grow, they're counting on those dollars and you cheat them off of their wage theft by not paying minimum wage, by working them overtime, by not giving them breaks that they're entitled to. Then you move all the way up to labor trafficking. When that wage theft and those abuses escalate to the point of being a, one of the most serious human rights violations, 
of labor trafficking, that's when you add force, fraud, and coercion to the wage theft and the wage abuses. We made a case recently, and this is a heartbreaking case of labor trafficking. This woman was working night and day babysitting this couple's twins. They stopped paying her. They, she, she had a cancer as a condition. They would not let her to go to her doctor's appointments without docking her pay, which they didn't pay. All of this escalated to the point that this woman's health be, became even more fragile. She couldn't pay the bill. She was worried about everything until we brought this felony action and found them in another county and extradite them for prosecution. Let this be a lesson that in San Diego County, we wanna honor, dignify, and follow the rule of law when it comes to our workers. And this also allows our employers to thrive who tell me all the time they can't compete against those who do not pay their fair wages. They're not able to compete for contracts. They're not able to survive in business. We want to allow room for the honest employers to be able to, to meet the moment and to thrive in this community. So this is part of what we're all doing today. And we are all coming together. The Office of Labor Standards and Enforcement, County Council, the DA's office, to strengthen our forces and to be able to tackle this issue together. If anyone out there is scared, has been abused, and you have a, a case of wage theft, a case of labor trafficking, no matter what your documentation status is, please come forward. You can call, you can go to our website, sandiegoda.com, you will find a whole section on workplace justice, or you can call 866-402-6044. You will get a call back in the language that you're comfortable with to walk you through. And the great thing is if there is not a criminal case, we're still able to make a referral to OLCE in order to look at how we can help this particular victim. Thank you so much.